Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and good evening. My name is Julianne Harris and I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. We are so delighted that you've tuned in with us this evening and we want you to interact with us. So how can you interact? Well, I'm glad you asked. In whatever forum you are watching, we want you to go down to the chat section and as questions enter into your heart, we want you to type those questions in and then the last 10 to 15 minutes of this program, we're gonna get to as many of those questions that you submit that we possibly can. So in order for you to interact with us, which is why we do these Bible studies live, uh, you need to know our schedule. So on Mondays and Fridays, we have Bible study at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m. and Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m. and that is all mountain time. So please write that down, calculate it out, and do your best to tune in while we're live so you can interact with us. Also, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That is absolutely amazing. And, you know, we're entering into a new year. And some, some of you all, I feel like, might have a heavy heart. So there's no reason why you should be going through anything alone this new year. We have prayer ministers that can direct you towards the Word of God, stand in their authority. And we see miracles happen all the time through our prayer ministers. So give them a call at 719-635-11. One, one, one. And last but not least, uh, as we're entering into the new year, you can sow into your future and into the future of everyone that is blessed by this uh, ministry. So I would encourage you to do that by becoming a partner or simply giving. So there's a couple different ways you can give. You can go to awmi.net slash give or give us a call at 719-635-1111. Those are all my announcements, and now I get to introduce our speaker for this evening, who is Mr. Wendell Parr. Welcome, Wendell. Thank you. Um, he has worked for the ministry uh, for a long time. He helped Andrew get Karis Bible College started, basically, and then he started the first international location, which was in England. So Wendell is a vital part of this ministry, and thus he has acquired the title Ministry Ambassador. Wow. Wow, is right. <laughs> so <laughs> we're excited for what you're bringing tonight. So bring us the word, Wendell. Well, thank you very much. And yes. it is good to be with you the first part of a new year. I always think it's exciting when we change years. And uh, yeah. so we just came into 2022. And this is what, 6th of, of January. Yes. So we're just beginning a new year. And, uh, you know, all those things that happened in the past, they're behind us. Amen. And that Paul's encouragement was for us to forget those things which are behind and, and just continue and move forward, pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. So I'm uh, beginning the year with a, a very basic uh, truth that is often not understood, even by seasoned believers, because I hear people talking. And we're going to deal with the subject of, of redemption. Now, the entire lesson won't, it'll have application because of redemption. But I want to start off by reading a verse that is so powerful over in the book of Revelation. Mm. And it's Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 9. And uh, this kind of sets the stage for what I want to share uh, this evening. And this is talking about uh, in, in heaven and uh, seven seals or uh, the book with the seven seals are here. And in verse 9, it talks about, and they, they sang a new song, saying unto Jesus, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. And here's the part that I want you to pay attention to. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. The part I want you to see is that the redemption was, uh, was provided by the Lord Jesus Christ through the shedding of his blood at Calvary's cross. And redemption is something that we ought to have a good understanding of. And yet, like I say, so many people, they only focus on one aspect uh, of redemption. 
But if you study even the word uh, redemption, redeemed, all of those that are connected together, you find out that it really has a, a, a I don't want to say a double meaning, but it, it has double application. And the first one, and the one that most people concentrate on, is the uh, uh, to be released after payment of ransom. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, it's the legal right to restoration. And so what, what uh, this means is that uh, in the Bible, uh, sin often is uh, referred to as being in slavery. Mm -hmm. And so as a slave, someone needed to pay the ransom to free us up from that slavery. Amen. And so we look at redemption and the first part of redemption is that by the blood of Jesus, that was the price that was paid uh, to buy our freedom. But the second part is the one that's uh, not always included. Not only is it a ransom paid to free us, but there is power involved that brings about the deliverance. Mm -hmm. And we often don't think about the fact that along with the, the price being paid for us to be set free, there was also the power that actually set us free. And this is something that we need to concentrate on. And so tonight, I want to share some things that uh, are evidence that we have been set free because of the price paid for Jesus. And basically, if, if we look at another definition of redemption, it's the legal right to restoration. And so we want to look tonight at the legal right of restoration of right standing with God that was provided to us at Calvary's cross. Amen. Now, let me read several scriptures here as we introduce this. And I think it's important that we, we open our Bible to these particular scriptures and let them speak to us. So the first one I want to look at is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And like I say, we're going to take the time to look at these and read them instead of just quoting them like we often do as ministers. Uh, let's read this one in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse uh, number 30. Here's what the scripture says. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So here we have the two words we're going to concentrate on tonight, righteousness and redemption. Amen. And then we go over to 2 Corinthians, and this is a very familiar verse uh, that most people uh, can quote this one because it goes right along with <laughs> verse 17. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 tells us this, For he, meaning the Lord, hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we, you and I, might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Now, continue here in, in, in 2 Corinthians and go over to uh, chapter 9. And in 2 Corinthians 9, in verse number 10, we have this stated. Now, he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister uh, bread for your food and multiply your seed sown, and here's the key, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now, remember, we're, we're talking about these two words, redemption and righteousness. Now, uh, James uh, chapter 3, and we go over there to, to this one, uh, and we read these uh, truths that are given to us in the book of James. And in James chapter 3 and verse number 18, I want you to see this, this verse, and it says... Uh, let me find, I was about to read chapter 2. It's chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse number 18. And it says, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So now we've got another word coming in here called the fruit of righteousness. And the last scripture we want to look at before we begin to expound on this is over in Philippians chapter 1. Mm -hmm. And in Philippians uh, 1, we read this uh, uh, verse in verse number 11, and it simply says this, being filled 
with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Now, the, the point that we need to, to get registered right here is all of these are speaking of the person who is a new creation in Christ or those who have been born again. This tells us right off the bat that because of the redemption that Jesus provided at Calvary, he made us righteous in the sight of God or once again restored to us the, the legal right to stand in right standing with God. Amen. And this is so important for believers, and we're going we're gonna to cover this uh, pretty thoroughly and, 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 and look at it from a lot of different angles. But the first statement I want to make, and I, you know, you can agree with it or don't agree with it, but it's a fact, the problem of most believers has been sin and sin consciousness. Yes. And if you're not careful... Uh, uh, you have to guard yourself or you'll get into this sin consciousness. You're always thinking about, uh, did I miss it? Did I do this? Or it's always kind of at the forefront. And so the, the, uh, the sin consciousness that prevails in so many Christians' lives is accompanied by the fact a lack of, of righteousness and a revelation of freedom from unrighteousness. They just, uh, it hasn't quite gone off in the, in the hearts and minds of so many believers. They're more sin conscious than they are righteous yeah. conscious. Amen. So true. And, and, and having right standing with God. Amen. And I believe the greatest need of the new creation, the new creature in Christ, is to come to realize how righteous we really are Amen. and how uh, boldly we can act as a new creation in Christ. Uh, it, uh, we become new creatures in Christ and we're righteous new creatures in Christ. Amen. Now, here's, here's the kicker. As a person concentrates on, on sin or sin consciousness or thinking of himself as being unworthy or unrighteous, it paralyzes the new creature. Now you say, does that really happen? Well, just listen to a lot of prayers of Christians. Yeah. And the first thing they begin to uh, do is talk about how un ungodly they are, or how unrighteous they are, or how unworthy they are. You hear it in their prayers. Yeah. And it's like they approach God like, well, we're just worms of the earth, you know? So true. And so anybody uh, that, that uh, uh, has that attitude keeps them from doing anything for God because they don't feel like they're worthy or are capable of doing it, and it keeps them in fear and unbelief. Amen. Now, I often hear this statement. Uh, people, Christians are saying, well, the church needs more power or the church needs more faith. You know, I, I, they, they sing songs about it. They talk about it. They pray about it. But do you realize that once you receive the Lord Jesus and you receive the Holy Spirit, you have all the power of heaven already resident within you? Praise God. Amen. And every person that's come to know the Lord already has faith. Yeah. Amen. It's all there. <laughs> it's been dealt to every man. Amen. Uh, the measure of faith. And so I'm saying that both of those are wrong attitudes of, of saying we need more power, we need more faith. No, I think what we need, the greatest need, is for the new creature to have a revelation of who they are in Christ. Amen. And what Jesus provided at Calvary, to know what God has done for us in and through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we have that revelation of who we are, and what God has done in us and provided for us, faith becomes as natural as breathing. Yeah. And power just is, it, it's just manifested. It's not a big deal. But as long as the devil can keep us ignorant of the word of God concerning God's provision for Christians, we'll live under fear and condemnation. And, the, and, and how are we going to get past that? Well, we could go in a lot of different directions, but to simplify it and just address it in, in one statement tonight is Romans 12, 2. Mm. Get your mind renewed yes. by the Word of God. In other words, uh, example, 
And like I say, we're just talking about some real basic things, but yet stumbled over by so many. Uh, example, uh, you, you think of yourself a, as an unworthy sinner. Mm. Now, how many times have you heard the phrase, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace? Yes, a lot. Well, you were a sinner, you were saved by grace, but now you're a new creature in Christ <laughs> and you're created in righteousness and true holiness. So instead of this confession of I'm just an old unworthy sinner, delete that. Just get that out of your mind as you renew it and begin to declare, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. <coughs> Pardon me. Another example, uh, uh, it, it has to do with, with sickness. I'm, I'm sick and I'm getting sicker. Well, how about deleting that <laughs> and replacing it with by stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Now, the only thing I'm doing is, is just telling you what happened when you were redeemed. Amen. When you became a new creature in Christ, you're not who you used to be. And we shouldn't be thinking like we used to think. Yes. We, we need to get past that. Now, uh, let me stop right here and insert this thought. Do you realize that it, uh, uh, when we're talking about renewing our mind, uh, we, could, we'd also, we could also say, let's educate ourselves in spiritual truths. Mm. Right. Now, it's a point. Uh, that's really been in the news lately about education. Mm -hmm. But do you realize that it's really against the law if we don't educate our children starting when they're four or five years old now? I mean, if you don't put them in school, somebody's going to come looking for you. Wow. <coughs> we believe in, <coughs> pardon me, in education. And we, we uh, this, this uh, uh, most people, are anxious to get their children in school to get them educated. Yes. And like I say, there's a lot of stuff going on in education right now, but we'll, we'll not deal with that. <laughs> but do but you realize we start educating our children the minute they're born? And, and, and they come into this world, they don't know anything. You and I didn't know anything when we came into this world. And we begin to be educated the minute we came in. and. And usually it started off like uh, the, the mother standing over the bassinet and saying, uh, looking at the baby and saying, Mama, say, say Mama. Say Mama. <laughs> exactly. It's well, true. we have to teach them because it's something they don't know. And then, yeah. and then of course, when they're out of the room, the daddy comes in and says, No, 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 daddy. Daddy. daddy say, say, Daddy. <laughs> and then we go right along the list and, and we yeah. teach them. You know, uh, show them a picture of a puppy. Uh, this is a dog, and dogs go bow wow. We always add the sound effects, right? <laughs> yes, it's fun. And, and the kitty cat goes meow, and and the pig goes oink oink, and we <laughs> and, and we go along and teaching them all these animal sounds. Yes. And then we went on to why they act like a monkey as we were growing <laughs> up. We, we, we teach them how to be animals. You that know? is true. That but is the true. point being, just. <laughs> You know, not to get too serious here, we're not at a funeral. Uh, the, the fact of the matter, we begin to educate our children the minute they come into the world with, with things that are not necessarily evil, but are not necessarily spiritual things. So now, this is what happens to Christians, is that you realize that, that uh, I, I think it's time that we begin to put pressure on ourselves to begin to educate ourselves spiritually. Yes. And we don't thank God for teachers Amen. in the body of Christ. Uh, God knew what he was doing when he set people in. And, and of course, we're blessed to be uh, associated with one of the best Bible teachers that I know of anywhere, Andrew yeah. Womack. Yeah. A and he, he uh, teaches us the word of God. And, and so we're, we're growing in this. So thank God for teachers. but. Andrew can't do it all. And you're not going to get it all by watching the live Bible study. There's a time and a place that as you begin to mature spiritually, you're going to have to start feeding yourself. Yes. And you have to make a commitment to do it. It's, it's, a, it's a decision that you're going to have to make. And so we need to educate ourselves spiritually and have as much interest in, in spiritual education as we do in secular education. The majority of Christians, if we, if, if we would look at it, uh, they'd be kindergartens as far as, as Bible knowledge goes. That's Absolutely. where they'd be. And, and you know, uh, there was a lady that I 
I had some dealings with when I was teaching at another Bible school, directing another Bible school. She was one of the instructors. And she, uh, over the years, had become very experienced in things that happened in Israel. So she would always take a, a tour group to Israel every year. And she was sharing with me one day how the guides that would take them on this tour of Israel or the Holy Land, as we sometimes call it, how they would actually be laughing behind the Christians' back when they'd hear Christians discussing events that supposedly took place in Israel in the life of Jesus. She said it was really embarrassing because the guides who didn't even profess to be Christians yeah. knew more about the Word of God than the people who were Christians that were on this trip. Mm. And she said it was amazing uh, how they would look at them and think, well, these people say they're Christians and they believe the Bible, and, and yet they don't know anything don't know. about what, what happened. Right. And she talked about the fact that so many Christians, uh, we, we, we probably know a very limited amount uh, of truth. So what we need to do is, and, and I know, don't anybody get me wrong, I know it's the Holy Spirit that makes the Word of God real and alive in your life, but I also know those who walk around with their kind of their heads in some kind of spiritual fantasy land and never study the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You and I and those people who just think they're so spiritual that they don't need to study the Word, they usually end up in heresy. Uh, you need to fill your minds with the Word of God and give the Spirit something to work with. Amen. 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 Now, we read those scriptures a while ago, uh, Philippians 1.11 and, and uh, 2 Corinthians 9.10. And basically, he was talking about bring forth fruits of righteousness. Uh, and, and he said, when a person knows he's righteous, there's fruit going to be produced from that right standing with God. And uh, uh, look, at, look at the life of Jesus. I don't think anyone would, no. would debate the fact that he was certainly righteous, that he, he had right standing with God. And, and look at his life for just a minute. And you realize that Jesus had no fear whatsoever of his father. Mm. I mean, they had a real intimate father-child relationship. Yes. All right? And he demonstrated his love for God, and we know that he talked with God because we're told many times he'd throw himself aside and spend an entire night <coughs> in communication with his father. Now, he doesn't. Nowhere indicated in the scriptures in the life of Jesus there's nowhere he thinks that God's going to strike him down with some kind of disease or sickness. Amen. It's, it's never, there's nothing that ever indicates that. Then we also know as we stay in the life of Jesus, there was no fear of the devil or demons. Oh, that's good. He, he would just uh, take charge over them. Uh, there, was, there was no fear of man. You can remember the many occasions where they came on one occasion they came and going to throw him off the cliff, and they, he just walked right through the crowd. He, he didn't have a fear of man. Amen. He didn't have any fear of circumstances. You remember when he was out in the boat with his disciples? He's sleeping. A storm comes up. <laughs> he's not afraid. He's sleeping soundly. The disciples yeah. are the ones operating in fear. So he had no fear of circumstance. He had no fear of sickness. Yeah. Here he was. He had the audacity to put his hands upon a leper. It, because he had no fear of, of sickness. He was confident of who he was, and that's, that's demonstrated when he's in the wilderness and Satan comes to him and, and always becomes every temp, starts every temptation with, if you are the Son of God. Did you know Jesus didn't even address that because he knew who he was? Yeah, he didn't. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So now, so what we're talking about, there's fruits of righteousness. Now, let's ask a, a really simple question that I think everybody's got the answer to. What fruit does a peach tree produce? I know. Peaches? <laughs> I, I, well, even Julianne got that one right. <laughs> peach trees produce peaches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it's, it's the natural thing. So what fruit will a righteous tree produce? Righteousness. Righteousness, exactly. Oh, you got it right, yes. <laughs> so what we just discussed concerning Jesus was a result of Jesus knowing his right standing with God. Amen. Everything we talked about is a fruit of righteousness. 
it was being produced because he knew he was righteous. So he, he uh, we need to look at this now. We see what Jesus did. Now let's look at this. Now I'm just, I'm going to give a lot of scripture locations. We're not going to take, well, we don't have the time to look them all up, yeah. but you can, I'll give you the reference and you can look them up for yourself. Remember, we started off saying that Jesus, one of the fruit of his right standing with God, was that he had no fear of God. You say, well, uh, and everybody, well, you go back in the beginning when Adam and Eve uh, sinned, what was the first thing they did? They hid from God because of fear. Yes. Yeah. So how does that fear done away with is when we understand that we have right standing with God and we have no reason to fear God. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to see is he has given us that perfect love and perfect love cast out fear. First John chapter four, verse 18. So we can say with, with Jesus, we don't fear God. We have no fear of our father because we know that he loves us and the scripture tells us he didn't even give us the spirit of fear. That's what Paul wrote to young Timothy. Well, secondly, mm. uh, as Jesus was, was, was in, not afraid to be in the presence of God, guess what? He's told us to come boldly into God's presence and talk with him, visit with him, come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Hebrews 4.16. Amen. All right, we said Jesus had no fear of the devil or demons. Well, guess what? Luke 10, 19 says that you and I, because we are right standing with God, we have authority over Satan and the demons. Amen. Okay, then we said that he had uh, no fear of man. Mm -hmm. Well, read Hebrews 13, verse 6 and 7 and find out that we should have no fear of man. Then we said he had no fear of circumstances. Yes. Romans 8, 35 through uh, 39 tells us that we should have no fear of circumstances. He had no fear of sickness. Well, should we? No. Matthew 8, 17, 1 Peter 2, 24, James 5, uh, 15. All of those scriptures say that, uh, that we shouldn't fear sickness. Amen. Matter of fact, we can, we can reckon on the truth that by his stripes we're healed. And then the last one, we said Jesus was, was confident of who he was. You and I need to develop a confidence of who we are in Romans 8, 16, which says his uh, spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And then 1 John chapter 3, 1 and 2 says, as talks about as Jesus is, so are we. We're now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we'll be like him. And so the point is, in the new birth, we've been made like Jesus. Yeah. And we have that yeah. same right standing with the Father that Jesus had with him. Amen. And, and the Bible tells us that God loves us in the same manner that he loved Jesus. Amen. Now, I don't think there's a person listening that doesn't think that the Father loved the Son. Right. But the Scripture says he loves us in the same way and has put us in the right same standing with him as Jesus was, we've been made righteous. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we need to recognize uh, who we are. Now, in these last few minutes, I'm going to give you one other scripture. Okay. Let's go over to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to look at this one, Ephesians 2 and verse number 10. And look at what it says. It says, for we are his workmanship, yes. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, we started off with the premise that feeling like you're still just an old unworthy sinner, that, that, uh, that you're sin conscious and you haven't developed your understanding of your right standing with God, well, you're not going to be able to fulfill and complete these works that we were ordained to do. Yeah. So look at this uh, one word here. We are his workmanship mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus. Now, uh, this occurred to me several years ago, and, and some of you may not even remember uh, VHS machines. I do. 
<laughs> but uh, I, I can remember that, that uh, one year at, when I was pastor in a church, and this is many years ago now, uh, the, the church gave us a, a beautiful VCR, the latest model, uh, to play our VHS tapes. Well, it didn't take a real genius to be able to turn it on and to put a tape in and push play. But we got with that machine a manual. And as you began to read that manual, you found out what all that machine could do could besides be. just play a tape. Right. Now, that was back then. And so I began to read this manual and found out what all this machine would do, and we began to enjoy some of the things that it would do. Now, I, I uh, got a new vehicle, one brand new, but it was new to me, that had all the bells and whistles. Yes. And it's got a lot of things on it. I mean, a lot of things that vehicle will do and, and the, the things that it has. Did you know I'm not using probably 90% of them? <laughs> And the reason is I haven't taken the time to pull the manual out of the, the dash pocket and read about what all those things will do. Mm, praise God. All right. Now, why did I bring that up? I see it. It says we are the Lord's workmanship. See, he knows mm. how he created us and what we're possible, what's possible for us to do. Mm. In other words, it says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Well, how are we going to find out what those things are that he says that he created us to do? We're going to have to read the manual. Amen. <laughs> and this is the manual, and this, this tells us what we can do. And we just, we just did a quick overview of the things that, that Jesus did, which was fruit of his fruit of righteousness, and we found out that we have the same fruit. Mm. because we've been made righteous because of what Jesus did at Calvary through his redemptive power. Mm -hmm. And what a price he paid, the shedding of his blood at Calvary to redeem us and to bring us into this right standing with God that we could do what God asked us to do. And isn't it amazing how many people want to quote John 14, 12, where Jesus says, he that believeth in me the works that I do shall he do also. Mm. We like to say it, but we don't find many Christians doing it. No. <laughs> and that's because we haven't read the manual and found out what we're capable of doing. Amen. Amen. Instead, most Christians like to argue about what is the greater work. Like, <laughs> let's just do what Jesus is doing and then let's figure that out. Praise God. Okay. Well, I, that's what I always say that when I read that verse. Don't worry about the greater works until you do until the work. You, <laughs> exactly. Let's get <laughs> that far. Then it will begin to take place. <laughs> awesome. So thank you guys for submitting questions. We're going to get to as many as we can. So uh, first off, Mary on chat says, uh, can you please explain the balance between consciousness of disobedience versus sin consciousness? <laughs> Sin consciousness is where you're just always thinking about what you've done wrong or what you haven't done right, or it's just the first thing on your mind. Now, of course, we are to reckon the fact that when we, when we actually do disobey, disobey, we need to be quick to repent and obey. And so that's, uh, that's something that shouldn't be a continual conscious thought that we're not doing what God wants us to do. So, uh, I, I wouldn't put them in the same category, even though they're both sin. Uh, it's just that we don't, we don't dwell on sin. And sad to say, there's so many ministers, they hammer on sin. They do, yeah. And uh, did you know that, that um, I'm sure their heart's in the right place and they don't want people to sin, but that's not the way that you uh, prevent people from sinning. The way you prevent people from sinning is to get them to closer to, to the, being obedient to the Lord by renewing their mind by the Word of God and finding out from the manual what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. Praise God. So. That's amazing. And I'm, I'm just going to say right here, 
that happened to me at Karis Bible College, and that's what happens to almost everyone who comes to Karis Bible College, is you learn who you are and it changes who you are. You behave Amen. like who you truly are. You're righteous. Amen. Oh, it's so good. Um, Okay, so Lynette on YouTube says, what about people stuck in addiction? How do they get free? Because you were talking about redemption and how you've been released, right? Uh, well, or the, the, uh, the Bible says, whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Right. But it also says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Mm. So when you get into the Word, I'm, I, you know, I, I may sound like a broke record, but all the answers to all these questions and, and ponderance, it, it's in the manual. It's in the book. It's in the Bible. Amen. And the way that we get to live in an overcoming life is to begin to see what we're capable of doing, what God has already uh, put within us to give us the ability to do these things. But you'll never know those things until you begin to renew your mind by the Word of God. And so... Uh, addiction, whatever it is, it's not stronger than the Word of God. Oh. And it's not stronger than the Holy Spirit that's within you. And so when you put the two together, you can overcome any addiction. Amen. Praise God. Um, Alfred on Facebook says, what's the difference between the faith uh, in Christ and faith in the gift of the Spirit? Well, I, I guess we need to uh, if we knew a little more about what was behind that question, yeah, uh, yeah. we could answer it a little better. But faith in Christ, probably, uh, if I'm understanding what she's saying, that faith in Christ is what it takes to get born again and become a new creature. Amen. Uh, and the second part uh, of that, faith in the in the gifts of the Spirit. Well, that's something that that uh, we those have been provided by the grace of God. Uh, most of you have heard the term charismatic. It uh, comes from the Greek word charismata, which means grace gift. So all of the gifts of the Spirit are provided by God, by His grace, but must be received and acted upon by your faith. But the faith comes from within you when you find out they're already in you. They're yours, and they just need to be activated. Praise God. So good, so good. Uh, Crystal has a really practical question on Facebook here. It says, um, how can we help our children become closer to the Lord without being pushy about it? Uh, well, the first thing, uh, the scripture says love never fails. Mm, amen. And when you begin to communicate things to your children and they know that it's being motivated by your love for them, I tell you, that will become more effective than trying to preach to them or mm. put rules and regulations on them. Just love them into the kingdom. Amen. Love them into the things of God because that's how God deals with us. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Praise God. We overcome evil with good. Amen. We just need to learn to operate as God operates toward us. We need to operate that way towards our children. Amen. So cool. and, and did you know the Lord has never uh, really come to you and, and begin to preach to you about what you need to do? Uh, he lovingly begins to reveal it to you. And if we love our children in that fashion, uh, they become a lot more receptive than us trying to. And I can, I can say that from experience because uh, when I first I began to pastor. I had a lot of religious ideas and hang-ups and, and uh, thought I could get my children persuaded and tell them they ought to be this way because of who I was. Mm. And it was when I... Huh? How did that work for Not you? Not very good. <laughs> it's when I began to love them with the unconditional love of God that they began to turn around and, and uh, reach out to the, for the things of God. Amen. I worked with a gal who said um, she had two children that were somewhat far apart in age. And the first one was raised uh, as they understood God in a, in a law-based fashion. So mm -hmm. it was like don't do this, don't do that. And then when they would do it, it was shame on you. I can't believe you did that, you know. Then they got a revelation of grace as the younger one is growing. And so then instead of doing the law base, it was more grace. Not, not that they didn't have boundaries or rules, but right. they said, this isn't who you are. 
Right. You are somebody, You. this is who you are. So it wasn't shame on you. It was like, no, this isn't who you are. Let me show you who you are. And she said the difference between the children and even their relationship with God. And so yeah. that's exactly what you're saying, right? Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I'm, I'm, every time we go down this road, I'm reminded there was a, a chain of steakhouses uh, throughout the United States back years ago, and I won't give the brand name, but it came out that they had the most modern dishwasher that had been made commercially, oh, commercial really? dishwasher. But it, it usually went out of order almost monthly. Oh, no. <laughs> and they found out the reason was, was in their training of the employees of how to use that machine. And the initial way of training them was, well, be sure you don't do this, and be sure you don't do that, and be sure you don't do this. And they kept messing the machine up. They changed their method of teaching, saying, this is the way we need to do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it this way. Oh, that's really And all of a sudden, they weren't having the messed up uh, dishwashing machines in their, in their company. Now, the, the other thing that went along with that is when you're talking to your children and you tell them when they go outside, be sure you don't slam the door. What do you hear next? <laughs> <laughs> and so the proper way to train them is when you leave, would you close the door softly? Nice. And believe it or not, God deals with us on that positive level. Amen. Not on uh, don't do this, but this is the way you should be doing it. Amen. Praise God. That's so good. Um, so Kevin on YouTube, I want to make sure our time is fine. Kevin on YouTube says, is there a good place to start the deep dive into scripture for the renewal of the mind and continual renewal? Where, where do you think Kevin should start in the process? Well, you know, I always recommend that you uh, study the gospel of John. Amen. And the reason that I like to go there, this was uh, this was one of the later Gospels to be written. And the Gospel of John was written to the Christians who had, had uh, been born again during that period of time. And so you have all of the teachings of Jesus uh, concerning our relationship with Him and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and all of the basic fundamental truths uh, that, are, that are necessary in a Christian's life. And John's Gospel really has Jesus to do the most teaching on what a believer should be doing. Mm. Starting with, you realize that, that John's the only gospel that said you must be born again. Mm. Yes. So he started with our born again experience and took us right on through uh, being filled with the Spirit and being led by the Spirit and etc. So uh, the gospel of John is a great place to begin to renew your mind. That's really awesome. Praise God. Okay, so we have time for another one. Uh, Ruthie on chat says, <coughs> is it a constant confessing and declaration that will help renew our mind to the truth of knowing that we've been redeemed? I, you know, confession is good. There's power in the spoken word. But uh, I think just spending time daily uh, in the word and in communication with the Lord. Amen. <coughs> we sometimes... Uh, lose sight of the fact that one reason Jesus uh, could walk so closely with the Father, yes, He was the Son of God, but He had to learn things the same way we did, mm -hmm. is that He spent time communicating with God, and so much Christian times with God is asking God for things or telling God what He needs to be doing mm -hmm. instead of having a conversation, right. which means that a lot of times you're just going to be quiet and listen. Amen. And so... I think there needs to set aside a time for personal, intimate time with the Lord and time in the Word on a regular basis. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're coming down to an end, you guys. So um, I just want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Pastor. I called you Pastor Wendell. Is that okay? That's okay. That's not, I normally don't call him Pastor Wendell. I don't know where that came from. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm prophesying. Oh, a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> so,
<laughs> so you guys are a blessing. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for submitting all your questions. We didn't get to all of them, but have no fear. Um, we have a question and answer roundup that happens every Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m on our Facebook page. So go to our Facebook page and uh, like it. So you guys have a good night. Make sure and tune in to live Bible study tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And we'll see you then. Have a good night, Wendell. Good night. All right, bye. Good night. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.